when I, as a kid though, everyone would come up to me like, oh my God, Mona. So like your mom's American and your dad's a Palestinian. Like how did they meet? Did your dad like take your mom hostage? How did that? Cause I wish like my mom would take my dad hostage or something like that. That's so romantic. When you have an American mom, the punishments are so heavy. They're so, Mona, you're grounded in your room, sweetheart. No TV. I'm like, okay, I got a cell phone. I got a computer. All right, I'm grounded. But an Arab mom, an Arab mom, it's like a temperature gauge when like, like temperature, like terrorism temperature gauge, you know? It starts off very like, My father, when he would discipline me, it made no sense, and he was very loud about it, too. He would like, he'd be all the time, Mona, come here. Next time you leave your bicycle outside, I will put it in your ear and out your nose. <laughs> First off, I don't negotiate with terrorists, number one. <laughs> all right? So when my parents would start fighting, they would start fighting, first in English. But then when my father was clearly losing the fight, he would revert to Arabic. <laughs> Okay, you know what? Okay, you know what? My mom would say, Mona, come here. What did your father just call me? Um, he said, you should cook more chicken. He really likes chicken. And he likes your mom. my British Nana eating next to my Palestinian head holy jidda. Do you know what that was like? It was like a UN negotiation. It was a UN negotiation. My jidda would say, Mona Taisha. Bagar. Bagar for Bagar means pretty girl. Bagar. And so then my nana was watching, she's like, oh right, okay, Mona, what'd she say? She said something about me and pointing. I know it was really nice, right? And I couldn't, I'm like, she thinks you're nice and you should make sure you eat more food. You're evil, basically. Like I'm Palestinian and I'm Muslim, but like it's like, I'm uh, not that Muslim, it's like diet Muslim. <laughs> it's like all the hair, but none of the pfft, you know what I'm saying? Like the only time I'm praying to Allah is when I straighten my hair and I got my extensions in and I'm outside. I'm like, yo, dear Allah, come here for a second. <laughs> I'll you for a minute. It's what else uh, I really spent a lot of time on this hair. I got the clips in, please. And seriously with the parking. All right, talk to you around Ramadan. See you later. <laughs> Are there any other Arabs in here? Look at that! Security! I told you I'm half white, alright? I'm not dumb. There it is. I'm not dumb! <laughs> no, but it's, it's interesting because growing up, people are like, oh my god, you know, Mona's temper. Don't, you know, don't mess with her because she's really feisty. Like, she's going to bust through a neighborhood, blow it up, and then set up a Walmart. Arab men, you guys have amazing pickup lines, I have to say. This Arab guy came up to me, and this was uh, back in the States. He's like, Mona, you're Arab too, yeah? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I am Arab, but tonight I want to be Israeli. <laughs> I was like, why? Okay? He's like, because I want to occupy your body. I was like, ah, oh, okay, well then I'm like the UN resolution, because this is never going to happen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you for supporting the